Greetings to all. The session is regarding intermediate chemistry will be very much helpful for your international exams that may be either entrance or any competitive exam you're aspiring for. And also it will be fetching for your um, uh, India level JE advanced and the JE means exam conducted by the government of India National Testing Agency twice a year and that will give the admission into IIT and NIT stream. That is the technical domain. NEET exam will be conducted all across India. That is for uh, medical entrance examination. That is a medical stream. Uh, Telangana government and Andhra Pradesh government are conducting the exams. MSET, that is for the admission into BTEC stream all across the uh, states. So in addition to this one, if you're aspiring for any competitive exams or any government organized uh, uh, opportunities, government jobs you are aspiring for, there the content what we are discussing is very much fetching for your preparation. Let's enter into our today's session. First thing we are going to discuss about the Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry for the year 2016. Uh, the Nobel Prize in the chemistry 2016 was jointly awarded to Jan Perry, Savage, Sir G. Fraser Stoddart and Bernard L. Peringa. These are accorded with how many are there? Jean Perry Savage is one of the scientists and Sir J. Francis Stoddart is a second eminent scientist. Bodard L. Faringa is uh, these three together contributed for the design and synthesis of molecular machines. So molecular machines were invented and they explored by these three scientists together. That's why they are laureated with the prestigious Nobel Prize, which is the world recognition. These are the scientists who are recorded with the uh, what most outstanding award in the world, Jane Perry Savage, Sir J. Fraser Stoddart, and Bernard L. Peringa. So these three scientists contributed one by third for this uh, Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry for the year 2016. Let's see what are their uh, uh, professional address which uh, contributed for this prestigious award. Jean Perry Savage uh, representing University of Strasbourg, France and Sir J. Fraser Stoddart uh, belongs to Northwestern University Evanston IL, United States of America. Bernard L. Peringa belongs to University of uh, Groningen, the Netherlands. So these three contributed for the design and synthesis of molecular machines, right? So these molecular machines are outstanding and moreover, um, they are having much explorated research in the field of this chemistry. The tiny left artificial muscles um, Meniscal Motors, the Nobel Prize in the Chemistry 2016 is awarded to Jan Pedi Savage, Sir J. Francis Stoddart and Bernard L. Faringa together for their design and production of molecular machines in order to develop the artificial uh, muscles and also for the kind of uh, motors in order to introduce in the living organisms, their contribution is a kind of unique pathway so that they are recorded with the Nobel Prize. They have developed the molecules with the con controllable moments. We can, just like a remote control, uh, these are having the operational uh, control. Operational control is there. Controllable moments will be there, which can perform a task when energy is added. Whenever energy is supplied in the sufficient quantity so that they are operational. The development of computing time demonstrate how the miniatures of technology can lead to the revolution. Uh, so here, the kind of condition, the unique pathway, the technology they utilized in order to help the uh, what living organisms. So here, artificial muscles can be manufactured and these machineries are having controllability so that in the living organisms, they are operational with the uh, effective results. In the year 2016, Nobel laureates in the chemistry have uh, miniaturized the machines and taken chemistry to the new dimension. Miniature is nothing but the tiny particle, the tiny dimension, the tiny device is said to be a miniature. Whatever article which available in the larger size can be, can be uh, crafted in the minute quantity which is said to be miniature. These miniature machines uh, take in this, uh, the field of chemistry in the new dimension. That's the reason why 
This kind of unique research got accorded with the Nobel Prize. The first step towards the molecular machine was taken by the Jean Perry Seve in the year 1983 when he succeeded uh, linking two ring shaped molecules together to form a chain. So chain type of molecule is generated by connecting the rings. So small rings got connected so that our lengthy chain got manufactured, which is said to be a catenin. Catenin is synthesized by the scientist Jan Perry Fast. Normally, molecules are joined by the strong covalent bonds in, the, in which atoms share the electrons, but in the chain, they are instead linked by the freer mechanical bond. The kind of linkage between the atoms is not the uh, conventional covalent bond, rather it is the new dimension we can notice. Mechanical bonds are tying up all the atoms, all the molecules together in order to make a long chain. For a machine to be able to perform, a task case must consist of parts that can move relative to each other. So whatever whatever task we are providing, they used to move in accordingly. So that is the way controllable moments we can, uh, we can observe in this kind of new invention. Here, this is the way the miniature mechanical device got uh, introduced so that you can combine all the molecules by means of mechanical linkage rather than uh, kind of uh, bonding, right? So this is the way these three scientists have gone in the new dimension of chemistry and which was a huge success and uh, design of molecular machines uh, were possible. And uh, we can notice these are the kind of miniatures Miniature car is available, miniature nano car, we can say all these are acquiring the nano scale. But the particles are acquiring the nano scale, extremely tiny dimensions. Just now we say miniatures, no miniatures are nothing but very tiny dimensions if you present. And these are considered to be a nano machines, nano dimensions they are acquiring right so molecular switch you can notice here binding site is located in between and the moving molecule will be there that is adjustable uh, by changing ph there is a kind of there is a kind of binding site will be shifted to another place so this is a kind of uh, moment we can notice so moment is possible and this is a kind of miniature car you can clearly observe electrons from the scanning tunnel and microscope tip leap onto the molecule that uh, form a wheels of this device by means of electron scanning tunneling microscopic process so they devised this kind of miniature car over here causing them to change configuration rotate and move the car forward it is possible to move this car as well right this is the way nano dimensions uh, is a kind of new pathway they developed and these are very much helpful in the field of um, medicine and it is the kind of another device you can notice a long range will be there and these are the kind of rings you are going to change their position you are you are shifting their position this this is the way so initially a ring will be added over here slowly it will be migrated like the like this so that uh, rings initially ring is here and uh, uh, adjusted over here lateral moving there and another ring is also added this is the way kind of kind of moment we can control so that is the reason why it is the kind of outstanding contribution in the field of chemistry by these three eminent scientists so that they recorded with the Nobel Prize, uh, definitely it will, it will be the elevation point in the field of chemistry, in the field of medicine as well. Let's move on to question number two. This is collected from Cambridge Assessment International Education. And here the question is regarding a uh, weak acid. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid whose pKa value is denoted as 4.76. 4.76 is the pKa value mentioned for this one and uh, what is meant by weak acid and uh, write the expression for the acid dissociation constant Ka for ethanoic acid in terms of concentrations uh, calculate the pH of 0 0.15 mole decimeter inverse 3 solution of ethanoic acid right so this is the way multiple questions are to be answered over here let's see what is what okay First of all, what is meant by weak acid? Any acid when added to water, if it is not completely ionizable, dissociation may not be possible 100% that is said to be weak acid, right? So strong acid, uh, otherwise strong acid when added to water, 100% ionized. If you are adding 1 ml, 1 ml will be ionized into cations and anions. 
If you are taking weak acid, partial ionization, we can notice. If 1 ml is added, 0 0.6 ml may get ionized and 0 0.4 ml remains as an unionized form only. That is the way weak ionization extent of dissociation is not much larger. Rather, it is the a partial ionization you can notice that is called a weak acid. And a weak acid, acetic acid or ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is the IUPAC name for the compound. Where two carbons with the carboxylic acid moiety you can notice so whenever this is the ethanoic acid was taken and dissolved in the sufficient solvent it is not releasing h plus ion full fledged rather uh, some extent of h plus ions released because of a partial dissociation of the compound partly it will be dissociated partly it will be dimerized so that hydrogens are not free for the donation hence it is the considered it is considered as a weak acid right so uh, partial ionization giving rise to the lesser extent of h plus ions upon ionization is called a uh, weak acid so ethanoic acid is the kind of weak acid we can notice and it's a K in order to in terms of ionization of uh, salt uh, ionization of this ethanoic acid they are asking for K in order to calculate um, Ka value for ethanoic acid or acetic acid, um, this will be taken. Ethanoic acid uh, will be ionized into the uh, anion and cation like the manner CH3COO minus is called um, carboxylate or acetate anion. Ethanoate we can say H plus cation will be ionized. So whenever this is the ionization condition so that you can apply the formula dissociation constant. Dissociation constant is equal to product concentration by reactant concentration. The product we can observe over here are CH3COO minus and H plus. These are called products and reactant will be acetic acid. So this is the way its a Ka value can be calculated. If you put their concentrations over here so that it is uh, uh, very convenient to calculate its dissociation constant value. And they're asking for that uh, pH of uh, ethanoic acid solution and whose uh, concentration is provided to you. pH can be calculated by taking negative log of H plus ion concentration. According to Sorensen, this is the equation is provided negative log of 0. 15 H plus ion ethanoic acid concentration is provided as a 0 0.15. It can be calculated as 0 0.82. This is the way all multiple questions got answered in a um, right manner so that um, uh, we concluded the question number two and uh, forwarding towards question number three. Question number three is uh, taken from this uh, data. Certain data is provided to you. Among this data, the question related with this data is the only correct combination that uh, gives two different carboxylic acid. Here, toluene is there, acetophenone is there, benzaldehyde is there, phenol is there. Among these, uh, these many compounds, which compound is proceeded for the reaction gives rise to two different carboxylic acids. And that might be reacted with either sodium hydroxide bromine or bromine under H new conditions. Here it is the acetic anhydride and potassium acetate combination called Perkin reaction. Sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide. The, these many reagents are provided. And uh, column number three represents the path, the uh, reaction way, what kind of reaction it might be. Either condensation, carboxylation, substitution, halophone what is the kind of reaction they are proceeding with okay so starting material reagent added and the path in which the reaction is proceeded by this the condition we required is two different carboxylic acids to be produced okay let's see one by one four three q four is nothing but phenol so phenol upon reaction with uh, uh, what is this acetic anhydride and potassium acetate and uh, here the reaction is carboxylation. If you observe clearly, this is uh, this is the reagent called Perkin reagent. And uh, uh, whenever it is added to phenol, there is no way reaction between these uh, kind of species. Rather, uh, this will participate in phenol will participate in uh, acylation so that we will achieve ester and uh, instead of carboxylic acid. So you can cancel out option number A. Phenol upon reaction with acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride works like a acylating agent on uh, OH group so that they will be esterified. 
whenever ester formed that uh, no way related with the uh, expected uh, question they are asking for so that you can strike up the option a move on to option b three can be taken three is benzaldehyde and three is the reagent that is acetic anhydride and uh, uh, potassium acetate and P will be the reaction pathway condensation. So this is the right option we can notice. And we will see how can we say justify justification of this answer, right? So let's see, let's see remaining why they are not correct. Okay, option number C. Uh, in that, uh, uh, two is taken as a starting material that is acetophenone. This is the kind of ketone you can see. The ketone uh, proceeded with sodium hydroxide carbon dioxide. Whenever sodium hydroxide carbon dioxide are treated, there is a provision to get carboxylic acid definitely, right? R is the substitution and moreover, it is the kind of substitution only. But the product is having one ketone, one carboxylic acid. So what uh, they are asking two different carboxylic acid may not be achieved rather you can go with only one carboxylic acid at meta position because acetophenone is the meta directing and the coming carbo this uh, carbon dioxide will attach at meta third position by means of carboxylation process only so entire process is correct but that not giving two carboxylic acid rather we will get one carboxylic acid one ketone so that you can strike up the option number c Move on to D. Here, you can see one is there. One is what? Toline. Toline means benzene containing methyl over there. Methyl functional group is uh, present over and uh, treated with sodium hydroxide bromine. Bromination in the presence of sodium hydroxide. This bromination in the presence of sodium hydroxide is more specific for what? Uh, iodoform reaction. This is the reagent more suitable for this haloform reaction. Uh, haloform reaction is correct only, but uh, toline will not uh, suitable for the uh, haloform reaction. The compulsory condition for the haloform reaction is presence of methyl ketone. C double bond was CH3 if present, then only reaction is positive towards haloform. Otherwise, it, uh, there is no provision, no feasibility. So that uh, we can cancel out this option D because toline is not suitable for haloform reaction strike of D. Only the possibility is B. Let's see how can we go with option number B. Here benzaldehyde was taken and subjected to acetic anhydride in the presence of sodium acetate salt. This is the named reaction called Perkin condensation. Perkin condensation giving this uh, whatever uh, aldehyde is there that turned into the hydroxy and uh, you can add a CH2, C double bond O, O, C double bond O, CH3. This is a kind of uh, ester containing hydroxy group over there on this carbon atom. Later on add water, acidified water will be added to this ester product. Whenever uh, we can say beta hydroxy ester, in, in general, we can uh, we can designate the compound as this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon. Beta carbon is hydroxy, beta hydroxy ester got generated by Perkin reaction. Subsequently hydrolyzed. Whenever hydrolyzed, ester will be converted into carboxylic acid. Ester will be ester linkage will be broken one H, one OH will be added. H added called carboxylic acid. OH added is also converted into any other carboxylic acid. And another thing is there where you can you can remove the water by dehydration because this OH and hydrogen most susceptible for dehydration so that the compound formed will be more stable rather than beta hydroxy. How can we say? This unsaturated is more stable than this one because the double bond is in direct conjugation with this ketonic group and this double bond is in direct conjugation with this benzene group as well. So that more the resonance stabilization for this compound in comparison to this one. Hence, rapidly beta hydroxy will be dehydrated giving rise to the double bonded linkage this is called a vinyl linkage and here the within the question they mentioned that two different carboxylic acids are the final product this is alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid and this is ethanoic acid called acetic acid so that you can achieve one is cinnamic acid in either is acetic acid as the multiple products are the two different carboxylic acids by taking 
benzaldehyde and treating with Perkin reagent by the process called by the process called condensation. This is the way you, you can go for condensation reaction, right? So all are satisfied in the option number B only. So that put a tick mark for B. For question three, B is the correct answer. Let's go with the question number four. The compound with the two lone pair of electrons in the central atom, right? If you observe the geometry in a clear manner, in order to understand the geometry, hybridization is preferable. And the two lone pair of electron containing central atoms to be depicted. Let's see. Uh, the correct answers are B and uh, C. Uh, BRFI is not having and uh, SA4 is also not having two lone pair of electrons, okay? So you can clearly see this ClF3 and xenon tetrafluoride both are having two lone pair of electrons around the central atom. This is called what uh, it, it is uh, participating in DSP3 hybridization and DSP3 hybridization giving rise to the trigonal bipyramidal geometry and two of the equatorial bonds are occupied by the lone pair of electrons and the remaining three bonds are said to be equivalent bond formation. This is the T-shape you can notice. Any other molecule is xenon tetrafluoride. Xenon tetrafluoride is participating in D2SP3 uh, hybridization and here two of the Axial bonds are occupied by the lone pair of electrons and the equatorial bonds. Equatorial bonds are connected with the four fluorines, xenon, tetrafluoride, with the two lone pairs. And here also two lone pairs. They are accomplished in the option B and option C as well. So that these two are the correct answers. Move on to question number five. Question number five. Question number three and four are collected. Three and four are collected from JE Advanced 2016 paper one questions. These are. And uh, question five is collected from MSET examination 2022. Okay. So compressibility factor is lower for ammonia and carbon dioxide gases than that of nitrogen gas. That is because this is the question given from gaseous state and that is purely related with the physical chemistry right so among all van der Waal constant a of the carbon dioxide and ammonia are greater than that of nitrogen van der Waal constants of a of carbon dioxide ammonia are less than that of nitrogen greater in one option lesser in any other option a of ammonia is greater than nitrogen but a of carbon dioxide is less than nitrogen a of ammonia is less than a, uh, a of nitrogen, but A of carbon dioxide is greater than A of nitrogen. A is the constant. So you already aware that uh, ideal gas equation got corrected by means of pressure correction and volume correction. Then it is shifted to Van der Waal equation. Um, Van der Waal equation is applicable to real gases, right? So where Van der Waal constant A of carbon dioxide because compressibility factor of ammonia and carbon dioxide both together the values are lower. Means both are having equal tendency towards Van der Waal constant A. Then only uh, this compressibility factor will be lower for these two. So that you can cancel out option 3 and option 4. Option 3 option 4 are saying that who one of the A values larger in either A value is smaller. So there, there is a kind of different, uh, different tendency in their A values. Ammonia may have A value higher, carbon dioxide may value A, A value lower. That may not be possible because compressibility factor for ammonia and carbon dioxide are similar in nature. Both are lower only in comparison to nitrogen. That's the reason why the A value should be either greater or lesser. The uh, answer will lays in between A, one and two options. So you can strike up three and four blindly, right? Move on to one and two. So here, if you observe the graphical representation, if you are plotting the graph between the pressure and compressibility factor, so that you can achieve the plots like this. And here, whatever line you are getting, that is a, a straight line, which is applicable for the ideal gases, whose Z value exactly is equal to one. 
if the compressibility factor is 1, the gas is said to be ideal gas. Okay. If the compressibility factor is greater than 1, that means the value is positive. The value is positive. These are said to be gases only. They are very difficult to liquefy. The gases whose compressibility factor values are greater than 1. You can see. This is the origin where we are starting with 1 now. So that above 1, the values are positive only because jet factor is higher. So that the whoever gases are having, whoever molecules having Z value larger, greater than 1, greater than 1, and they exist in gaseous form only. And whoever which are laying less than this 1, whose compressibility factor value is less than 1, then they are gases only. But the thing is, they can easily liquefiable gases by applying the pressure or else lowering the temperature. You can liquefy them so that they are called liquefiable gases. And whoever laying above this horizontal line are called non-liquefiable gases. Okay. So, uh, the, the dotted lines which indicated, which are laying above one, are showing positive deviation. Deviation means they are not exactly resembling this ideal gas, right? They are above that ideal gas line, so that they are showing positive deviation. The lines whichever, the curves whichever coming below that, below that uh, number one, so that they are called, uh, they, uh, they are existing, they are exhibiting negative deviation. Okay, so here real gases are not exactly resembling ideal gas, rather they are showing deviation with respect to ideal gas. Okay, so the gases whichever showing the positive deviation are non-liquefiable, negative deviation are liquefiable gases because whose Z value is negative, whose Z value is smaller. The question is why the Z value is, why the Z value is smaller for ammonia and carbon dioxide in comparison to nitrogen? The reason is, the reason is explained by considering Van der Waal equation. P plus A by V square into V minus B is equal to RT. This is called Van der Waal equation. P plus A by V square, A by V square is the pressure correction. B is the volume correction. Okay, if you observe this, if you observe this, A by V square increases at low pressure. So, if pressure is low, A by V square value get increased. P plus A by V square, V is equal to RT. If this is the case, if we are neglecting this B term, so that what, what it will be, P plus A by V square, V is equal to RT. Here, denominator volume is there, numerator volume is there, you can strike up so that it will be PV is equal to RT minus A by, A by V, right? So here, PV by RT is equal to 1 minus A by RTV. This PV by RT value exactly is equal to, PV by RT value exactly is equal to compressibility factor. So that put, put a compressibility factor, Z is equal to 1 minus A by RTV. Let me repeat, compressibility factor Z is equal to 1 minus A by RTV. That means what um, Z is the compressibility factor and A is indicated with the negative sign that, uh, that indicates compressibility factor and uh, this Van der Waal constant A are inversely proportional to each other. As the Van der Waal constant value increases, compressibility factor value decreases. Larger the compressibility factor, lower the A value. Or else, uh, lower the compressibility factor, larger the A value. Because both are reciprocal to each other, inversely proportional to each other. So that compressibility factor of the ammonia and carbon dioxide gases are lower that is because Van der Waal constant A for carbon dioxide ammonia is greater because both the values are Z and A are inversely proportional to each other by this equation. Which equation? Z is equal to 1 minus A by RTV, right? Z is equal to minus A means both are reciprocal, opposite to each other, okay? So that option A is the correct answer with respect to this question. For question number 5, option number 1 is the right answer. 
Move on to question number six, the last question of the session. It is the numerical taken from this uh, organic chemistry part, right? Uh, combustion of uh, 10 ml of gaseous hydrocarbon gives 40 ml of carbon dioxide, 50 ml of water vapor under the same conditions. The molecular formula of the hydrocarbon is... Okay, so here hydrocarbon was taken and subjected to combustion. Combustion means what? We are burning in the presence of oxygen. Whenever hydrocarbon combusted, in that name only specifying hydrocarbon made up of hydrogen and carbon. So that they got burned gives rise to one is carbon dioxide and either is water, right? Their amount of product formations also mentioned for you. But only the thing is, what is the molecular weight of this unknown starting material hydrocarbon taken, right? So that is either C4H6, C4H8, C3H4, C4H10. What is the answer? We have to find out, okay? So let's go with that calculation. According to the data given, according to the data given to you, let me put uh, hydrocarbon is unknown so that CX and HY will be taken. So which is not known to you. CX HY is called hydrocarbon whose volume is taken as 10 ml. That subjected to combustion means mixing with oxygen. Here place symbol should be there. Oxygen will be added. Whenever oxygen is added and heated so that the process is combustion, entire carbon will be carbon dioxide, entire hydrogen will be H2O. In this product, you can notice carbons are one only, but hydrogens are generated with the two in number because water is having this kind of nature, H2O formation. And the amount of carbon dioxide formed is 40 ml. Amount of water formed will be 50 ml. This is the data you already know. You already got it. Okay. So 10 ml of hydrocarbon produces 40 ml of carbon dioxide, right? Okay. 10 ml of hydrocarbon that upon combustion giving 40 ml of carbon dioxide. The number of atoms is equal to, number of atoms is equal to 40 by 10 can be taken. Okay, 40 by 10, you can strike up zero so that the answer is four. What atoms you are counting? Here, carbon dioxide generated that subsequently gives number of carbon atoms. How many carbons you have? Four carbons we have, okay. So, by this carbon number, you got reduced. X value is known to you. Move on to calculation of Y. 10 ml of gaseous hydrocarbon giving rise to 50 ml of water. Combustion of, combustion of 10 ml of gaseous hydrocarbon giving 50 ml of water to you. It is very clear. 50 ml of water is generated. So, number of hydrogen atoms is equal to, let me repeat, Number of hydrogen atoms is equal to put 50 by 10. 50 by 10 into 2 can be multiplied. Why 2 multiplied? Because hydrogens are taken 2 times. So that 50 by 10 can be multiplied with 2. Strike of 0, 0. So that it will become 5 into 2. 5 to the 10. So number of hydrogen atoms are becoming 10. Carbons are 4. Hydrogens are 10. So that C4H10 that is butane option number four is the correct answer by this question number six is successfully solved and option four is the correct answer c4h10 is the molecular formula of butane cnh2n plus 2 is the saturated hydrocarbon alkane here being it is the four carbon chain so that you can put butane as the name for the compound so by this successfully, we entirely completed the session and we gone with the various dimensions of chemistry covered with the all uh, related topics and uh, so many times are repeated previous questions, previous questions are taken into the consideration. Those who are seriously preparing the kind of sessions what we are creating in the, on daily basis, definitely they will crack the exam what they are seriously aspiring for. Either it may be entrance or any competitive exam as well so that they can definitely achieve their dream whatever they are aspiring right so here uh, i'm sincerely requesting to like the channel and in order to comment we have a question over here right so the question for the session is in the entire van der Waal equation can you put units of 
Vanderwell constant A, Vanderwell constant B. Vanderwell constant A is the pressure correction. Vanderwell constant B is the volume correction. Vanderwell constant A is having some units and B is also having certain units. You can you can put the uh, units of Vanderwell constant A and B on the comment box for the session and share with the aspirants who are more serious about the examination, more curious to get the knowledge regarding the chemistry so that you can share with them. It will be really helpful for their uh, preparation. And subscribe the channel. We are going to... Uh, collate the new and uh, a kind of uh, very informative uh, sessions in the near future so that we will get all the notification if you are going to subscribe them right so by this we are going to conclude thank you very much thank you one and all